This episode of After School is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Dostoevsky said that in Notes from the Underground, a great, great book. And, you know, he said, I love this. It was his, uh, an early critic, crit, criticism of the notion of a political utopia. He said, look, if you gave people everything they wanted, they had nothing to eat but cake, and nothing to do but sit in warm pools and busy themselves with the continuation of the species, that was his, his lines, that the first thing they would do, well, maybe after the first week, was like go kind of half insane and smash everything up just so that something that they didn't expect would happen so that they'd have something interesting to do. And it's, it's so right because, you know, the, the utopian notion that if you just had all the material stuff you wanted that you'd, you'd be, well, what would you be? What, what would you do? Would, would you just sit on the couch and, and watch TV? I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd be, I don't know what, you'd be cutting yourself just for entertainment in no time flat, you know, and that's the sort of thing that people do. And so we're not adapted for security and utopia. We're adapted for a certain amount of security because, you know, we are vulnerable, but mostly we want to have one foot out where we don't know what the hell is going on because that's where you're alert and alive and tense and with it. And, and, you know, I think, I believe this, and, and I believe it actually has something to do with the hemispheric structure of, of the physiology of your brain, is because the right hemisphere looks roughly adapted to what you don't know, and the left hemisphere, and this is a very, this is an oversimplification, but a useful one, is adapted to the world that you do know, and the right place for you to be is halfway between them. Because that, and you can tell that, that's what's so cool. And, and this tells you that this is actually reality that's manifesting itself to you. You know, that sense of active engagement you have in the world when things are working well for you, you know, where you're, where you should be at the right time. You're alert and on top of things and engaged and you don't have much of a sense of time. And the sense of the tragedy of life sort of recedes. And that's when you're, that's when you've got one foot when it's, where it's secure and one foot out in the unknown and your brain signals to you that you're in the right place by making what you're doing meaningful. And that sense of meaning is actually a neurophysiological signal that you've got the forces of the cosmos properly balanced in your being at that moment. And that's why it feels so good. And now, well, what else could it possibly be? I mean, you know, our, our, our brain is capable of looking beyond our vision. That's what it's for. And that sense of engagement, there's no reason to assume that that's anything but a real signal. And you can reduce it. You could say, well, the problem with being where you know only is that you don't know everything. And that's going to be a problem in the future. And the problem with being where you know nothing is <laughs> that's just too much, man. Like, you know, you go into panic mode and because anything can happen there and you can't handle it. So you've got to mediate between those two things. You want to be secure enough so that your physiology isn't revving out of control. And you want to be out there in the unknown enough so that you keep updating yourself constantly, constantly, constantly. And that's, that's the place where information flow is maximized. And you know that because that's where you are when you're having a really interesting conversation with someone or you're gripped by a book or you're really into a movie or maybe something that you do as a uh, you know, apart from your work, or maybe even in your work, you're into it. And that's because you are in the right place at the right time. And your whole nervous system is signaling that to you. And I would say that's the sort of place that you should be all the time. If, of course, you can't be because no one's perfect. But it's, that's, that's the recreation of paradise on earth. It's something like it because you are in the right place at the right time when that is happening. And so we're mobile creatures, right? We need to know where we're going because all we're ever concerned about, roughly speaking, is where we're going. That's what we need to know. Where are we going? What are we doing and why? It turns out that the way that we're constructed neurophysiologically is that we don't experience any positive emotion unless we have an aim and we can see ourselves progressing towards that aim. It isn't precisely attaining the aim that makes us happy. As you all know, if you've ever attained anything, because as soon as you attain it, then the whole little game ends. Then you have to come up with another game, right? So it's, it's Sisyphus, and that, that's okay. But, but it does show that the attainment can't be the thing that drives you because it collapses the game. That's what happens when you graduate from university. It's like you're king of the mountain for one day, and then you're like surf at, at, 
at, at Starbucks for the next five years, you know, so, yeah. So what happens is that, that human beings are weird creatures because we're much more activated by having an aim and moving towards it than we are by attainment. And what that means is you have to have an aim and that means you have to have an interpretation. And it also means that the nobler the aim, that's one way of thinking about it, the better your life. And that's a really interesting thing to know because, you know, you've heard ever since you were tiny that you should act like a good person and you shouldn't lie, for example. And you might think, well, why the hell should I act like a good person and why not lie? I mean, even a three-year-old can ask that question because smart, smart kids learn to lie earlier, by the way. And they, they think, well, why not twist the fabric of reality so that it serves your specific short-term needs? I mean, that's a great question. Why not do that? Why act morally? If you can get away with something and it, it brings you closer to something you want, well, why not do it? These are good questions. It's not self-evident. Well, it seems to me tied in with what I just mentioned. It's like you destabilize yourself and things become chaotic. That's not good. And if you don't have a noble aim, then you have nothing but, but shallow, trivial pleasures, and they don't sustain you. And that's not good because because life is so difficult, so much, it's so much suffering, it's so complex, it ends and everyone dies and it's painful. It's like without a noble aim, how can you withstand any of that? You can't, you become desperate. And once you become desperate, things go, things go from bad to worse very rapidly when you become desperate. And so there's the idea of the noble aim and it's, it's not something, it's, it's something that's necessary. It's the bread that people cannot live without, right? That's not physical bread. It's the noble aim. And what is that? Well, it's to pay attention. It's to speak properly. It's to confront chaos. It's to make a better world. It's something like that. And that's enough of a noble aim so that you can stand up without, you know, cringing at the very thought of your own existence so that you can do something that's worthwhile to justify your wretched position on the planet and whatever it is that is you has this capacity to experience reality and to transform it which is a very strange thing you know you can conceptualize a future in your imagination and then you can work and make that manifest you participate in the process of creation that's an amazing idea because it gives consciousness a constitutive role in the cosmos This episode of After School is brought to you by Manscaped.com. According to Dr. Peterson, global changes begin on an individual level. In order to make the world better, we must make ourselves better. Part of being your best is looking your best and feeling your best. Manscaped has created the world's first all-in-one manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. They just released their new Lawnmower 3.0 cordless waterproof body trimmer as a part of the Perfect Package Kit. This trimmer is built with skin safe technology, which means no nicks or cuts on your coconuts. The perfect tools for your family jewels. Get 20% off plus free shipping plus two free gifts when you purchase the new Perfect Package 3.0 kit with promo code AFTERSCHOOL at manscaped.com.